This is the Porsche 919 Evo. It's what you get when you take a Le Mans winning prototype and rip up the rule book. In 2018, Porsche set its engineers a single goal, make a car go faster than anything else. But how did Porsche make the 919 faster than even the latest F1 cars? What rules did Porsche need to ignore to turn an LMP1 car into a machine capable of being the fastest car ever to lap the Nürburgring? All of that coming up. The Porsche 919 was a dominant machine in the World Endurance Championships LMP1 category, winning 17 of the 33 races it took part in and winning three championships in a row from 2015 to 2017. It was a truly groundbreaking car with an astonishingly efficient V4 engine and one of the most advanced hybrid systems ever. After winning Le Mans three times over, the time came for Porsche to retire the 919 and with that, their LMP1 campaign. So Porsche looked for a way to give it the send off it deserved. And with that, Porsche produced one final hurrah, the 919 Evo. They stuck the rule books in the shredder and let their engineering team loose. This resulted in them building a car that demolished the Nürburgring lap record that had stood for over 35 years and was held by another Porsche, the legendary 956C. In the end, the 919 beat the 956C by lapping in 5 minutes and 19 seconds. The Porsche 919 Evo gave Porsche the opportunity to ditch the normal LMP1 rules, where to keep cars safe when racing, they are limited by rules like maximum fuel flow, maximum energy deployment over a single lap, and the size of the aerodynamic devices. And because of these rules and the extra reliability needed for endurance racing, LMP1 cars generally are about 15 seconds slower than F1 cars over a single lap. So how did Porsche go about gaining that extra performance? The first thing Porsche did was to remove the rule mandated fuel flow restrictor, which without changing anything else about the power unit, allowed the 2 litre V4 combustion engine to produce an extra 220 horsepower taking the engine's power from 500 to 720 brake horsepower. They were also able to amp up the car's electric motor, the MG UK, from 400 horsepower to 440, meaning the 919 Evo's powertrain produces 1,160 horsepower in total. The hybrid system in the 919 is similar to that of an F1 car, with an MG UK that recharges the battery under braking and deploys the energy under acceleration. In addition to this, the car regenerates energy from the exhaust gases in a turbo with its MGUH. However, the 919 deploys this extra power through the front wheels, making it four-wheel drive rather than the two-wheel drive setup that F1 cars use. Porsche were able to transform the standard aero package by adding an active aero system. This uses hydraulics to change the attack angle of the revised front diffuser and rear wing throughout the lap allowing the car to dynamically increase downforce for the corners and reduce drag for the straights. This enables the car to reach a staggering 223 miles an hour along the Kemmel Straight at Spa. Porsche also added skirts down the side of the car to trap airflow running past the under tray and out of the giant diffuser, maximizing the effect of the low pressure air under the car and sucking it onto the track. This is regulated against in pretty much every form of motorsport since the very successful but ultimately dangerous Lotus 79 Formula 1 car from the 80s. This is the beauty of the 919 Evo. These things don't matter when you're only completing a couple of laps and are the only car on the track. With the combined effect of the revised wings, diffusers and skirts, the Evo produces 53 more percent downforce than the standard 919. Porsche actually say that the Evo produces more downforce than a Formula 1 car. Because the Porsche 919 Evo won't be required to complete 24 hours at Le Mans, Porsche were able to remove things like headlights, windscreen wipers, pneumatic jacks and cockpit cooling systems. All of this led to the Evo being 86 kilograms lighter than the standard car, meaning the Evo has a power to weight ratio of 1,350 brake horsepower per tonne. Porsche also called upon Michelin to produce a one-off tyre for the Evo, increasing the grip on the tarmac with a custom-made, much softer compound. It was so soft that Porsche had to complete laps of the Nürburgring in the early hours of the morning, so the track temperature was low enough for the tyres to stay in their optimum operating window throughout the lap. 
Porsche were also able to implement some clever hydraulics to enhance the braking systems as well, using the onboard computer system to create a torque vectoring braking system. Sensors check the grip levels on each contact pack hundreds of times a second and using a computer to apply the optimum brake pressure to stop the car as quickly as possible, keeping the tyre right on the limit of grip. If you're still watching and enjoying this video, let me take one second to ask you to subscribe to the Drive61 channel. Porsche's main goal with the 919 EVO was the lap record at Spa. At the time, this was held by Lewis Hamilton with his pole time of a 1 minute 42.553. This was over 13 seconds faster than the qualifying time that Brendan Hartley set in the standard 919 at Spa the year before. After a few attempts, Neil Yarny, the Porsche works driver, managed an astounding time of a 141.7 in the 919 Evo and so beat the Mercedes F1 car by just over 7 tenths of a second, an incredible margin considering the pace of the current era of Formula 1 cars. The only lap record the Evo didn't beat was at Brands Hatch, where I actually have the outright lap record. With a car like the Evo, it's tough to see what the next lap record holder could be. There are very few cars that could challenge it in outright performance. The first has to be if an F1 car took a page from Porsche's book and threw the rules in the shredder to make a one-off hot lapping monster. Imagine this year's Mercedes F1 car with active aero and more power. F1 cars are currently held back by a minimum weight limit and maximum fuel flow allowed. Removing these limits could create a car much more capable than the 919 Evo. There could also be a possibility of an electric car going quicker. VW have developed an equally bonkers prototype that could be capable of a similar time. It's called the IDR Pikes Peak. It's a dual motor four-wheel drive track machine with some very clever torque vectoring that set the Nürburgring lap record for an electric car at 6 minutes and 5 seconds. However, this is still 40 seconds off the 919 Evo, but it could fare better over a shorter lap at Spa. Interestingly, Neil Yarny, the lap record holder at Spa, said that the car could go a lot faster, but the limiting factor was himself. The sheer g-force on his body meant he couldn't go quicker. At times, the car was pulling 4.5G of lateral acceleration, meaning Neil had to take two months to train his neck to be able to cope with the car's performance. If you enjoyed this, check out these other videos where I break down the techniques of famous F1 drivers. Thank you for watching, and if you did enjoy this video, please remember to subscribe to the Driver61 channel. See you next time.